Gothenburg, the capital of the Northwest Province. Historically famous for its diamond rush that preceded the discovery of gold on the Witwatersrand. Road. Today, a bustling town at the heart of a millie and sunflower farming community, and the venue for the start of the first round of the 2001 MSA Off-Road Championship, the GC Krobler Luchtenberg 400. Here at the Lafarge Luchtenberg Raceway, competitors are gathering for the opening 28-kilometer time trial that will determine the starting order for the 400-kilometer race proper. This year's Off-Road Championship has attracted the attention of no less than five of South Africa's motor manufacturers, namely Ford, Isuzu, Mitsubishi, Nissan and Toyota. The pits at the racetrack were a hive of activity as works and privateer teams alike made final adjustments. It was also an opportunity to renew friendships and catch up after the long break between seasons. The tranquility of a wetland near the start was shattered by the roar of high-powered engines as the time trial got underway. Hannes Hobler and Richard Leake led the factory Nissan Assault in their Class T Nissan Hardbody, a vehicle that had promised much last year but is still to deliver the goods. A puncture on their super truck thwarted their early efforts and they were able to manage only eighth overall. The Volvo engine Jojo Tanks VW Beetle of Yaki Hubert and Case Klein had no such problems and finished 6th overall and 4th in Class A in the Special Vehicle category. The Birkin brothers, Andrew and Chris, also made a good start in their Class E Toyota Hilux 4x4 and would start well ahead of their rivals. Strong contenders for overall honours were the father and son team of Franz Chepek Senior and Junior in their V-Motors Chenoweth. Engine problems dropped them to 6th in class and 10th overall, while another father and son team, Robert and Gareth Walk, had a smooth run in their super paved race coat to finish 3rd overall. Yet another father and son pairing, Gary and Bodo Berthold, in their M&E glass race coat, completed the time trial 5th in class and 9th overall. One of the surprises of the time trial was the strong showing by, you guessed it, another father and son team, Rashid and Faisal Noble from Botswana, who secured an excellent fourth place in the starting order for the main event in their Abe's Furniture Ace Code. Fifth overall and second in the super truck class of the production vehicle category were consistent podium finishers Cliff Barker and Malcolm Hubert in their privately entered and unsponsored Land Rover. Marker, hard at work at the wheel of the BMW M3 engine Land Rover, adopted his usual take-no-prisoners approach, and here he overtakes the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser of Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smallberger. Thanks, mate. Despite brake problems, Stratford Wirft and Scott Abraham muscled their British V8 engine vacation van's Jeep Cherokee into third in the super truck class and seventh overall. The heaviest vehicle in the 74-car field, weighing in at just under three tons, the Jeep is a firm favourite with the fans. It takes a strong man to hold the bucking wheel and keep the beast on the road. Brothers Harrod and Lawrence Duplessis led the special vehicle charge with an outstanding effort that saw them grab second place overall in their Chenoweth, a mere 19 seconds off the pace. Heroes of the time trial, however, were multiple national production vehicle champions Arpi Reinecke and Robin Houghton in the factory Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. Making his super truck debut in the Class T Nissan Hardbody was four-time South African touring car champion Camille de Villiers with Francois Jordan alongside him in the hot seat. Despite a puncture, they finished 16th overall and 7th in class. Back in the pits, there was an opportunity to take stock and repair damage. Yeah, all the damage we de Villiers, who drove a Class D Nissan Hardbody last year in his first season of off-road racing, enjoyed the ride. It was very exciting, I must say it's, it's a lot less bumpy than the other one that I drove. Um, it's a learning curve, it's something new to me, um, but we just got to get used to it. We only got the truck together the early this morning and um, I must say, I mean, the way it went now, just in the time trial, was amazing. Uh, we had a flat tire and just little small things that aren't right yet, but it's, I think it's going to be good fun and it's going to be very exciting to drive. Former special vehicle champion Bucks Carolyn reveled in his debut in the works Mitsubishi Pajero with Henny Tostega doing the navigating. The ex Dakar Pajero, which arrived in the country just days before the GC Probler Lichtenberg 400, was the center of attention in the pits before the start and much was expected of it and its team's performance. The ebullient Carolyn was having a ball and if it had not been for a puncture, they would have finished higher than 14th overall and 5th in class. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Puncher, that's all we had. Eight case from the end, we decided 
just to try and nurse it in because to fix a puncture was five minutes so we just uh, we just cruised the car in because we couldn't fix a puncture in that time so the wheel let go at the about 800 meters from the finish started chucking we just went slow and that's us but we had a great time it was fantastic out there i love this car first single seater among the special vehicles was the industrious max moore in his industrial hardware mighty mag Max put the nimble handling and effective power to weight ratio of his space frame vehicle to good effect and completed the time trial almost a minute ahead of his closest rival in class B. He was 13th overall. Heading class D after an incident free run was the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser of Shumi Panfiran and Barney Kotzer. They finished 17th overall and just 17 seconds ahead of Niels and Zelda van der Waals in their Nissan Hardbody, setting up the prospect of a good battle for class D honors. Another steady performance by the Birkin brothers after a problem-free run saw them bring their Toyota Hilux home first in Class E, nearly two and a half minutes ahead of their closest rivals. Former touring car driver Duncan Foss enjoyed his baptism of fire in the works Class D Nissan Hardbody. Not only did he have to quickly adapt to the unfamiliar art of driving fast on the dirt, but minor mechanical problems intervened and he and navigator Chris Griffiths had to contend with 10th in the class. Closer inspection in the pits revealed that a torsion bar holder had failed. Unbelievable. Yeah, the, uh, Glenn phoned me on Tuesday and he told me to come to Gerotech and I went for a test session with Hannes Hobler in, in his super truck and I couldn't believe how fast it was. Off, 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 off the road surface, it was unbelievable. It was actually quite terrifying and something that I'm not used to at all. So I'm on a big learning curve and uh, yeah, um, it's a big wake up call for me. Teams were hard at work making repairs and adjustments for the main event. Brakes disappeared. Thorough preparation is vital for success in off-road racing as it is in any other form of motorsport. And throughout the pit area there were signs of technicians hard at work getting their vehicles ready for Saturday's race which would be run over two loops. We caught up with third placed Rob Walk who was faced with the task of closing a one minute gap to leader Arpi Reinecke in the Castrol Toyota. Yeah, we lost the belt five k's before the, the finished the fan belt broke. Well, it came off and then just before the end it, it was lying loose and it took the power steering pulley belt off. But it was all right. I think, don't think we lost too much time. Castrol Jimco driver Greg Harvey was delightfully honest about his problems. Yeah, twice, so badly. The ones we were on this side of the fence, we supposed to be on that side of the fence, so... <laughs> As the pit crews wound up their day's work, ominous storm clouds were building up in the western skies. Would it rain overnight? The top ten starting order. Harvey Reinecke, followed by the Duplessis brothers, the Walks, Nobles, Barker and Hubert, Furcht, Probler, the Bertholds, and the Chepek. Bright and sunny, and unlike usual off-road pre-dawn race starts, this one got underway at a reasonable time, with the first car, the Toyota Land Cruiser of Reinecke and Houghton, off at 8 a.m. Everyone seemed to be in high spirits, and overnight rain meant that competitors would expect muddy conditions in the early stages, but no dust. It's a bit wet outside but uh, it suits us and uh, we're very happy for being first on the, on the road. And I think uh, we'll take it a bit slow this morning. I think it's going to be very wet and slippery. And uh, I would say after an hour or two, it'd be quite dry and then we can send as fast as we can. Reineke and Houghton got proceedings underway and immediately came to grips with the unusual experience of racing on tar. The Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser, set up for rough off-road conditions, is clearly not happy with the tarmac, which is causing it to experience understeer. Someone who is experiencing lesser problems is our leading special vehicle contender. Last year it was a bit of a problem. It was very lekker om to stay where was now staan. The Duplessis pair were away next. They prepared their car themselves, and while they used to share the driving, Carrot has in recent times taken charge of the driving duties, with Lawrence handling the navigation. Their Porsche-powered Chenoweth has proved to be a formidable contender in recent events, but somehow seems to be plagued by niggling reliability problems. Hard on the heels of the Duplessis brothers was the father and son pairing of Rob and Gareth Watt, who were followed in quick succession by the nobles from Gaborone in their Ace Coat, and Cliff Barker and Malcolm Hubert in the Caledon 400 winning Land Rover. 
seconds behind Barker was the ever-popular Yaki Hubert, now with rally driver Hayes Klein in the Jojo Tanks VW Volvo. Stratford Furcht, electing to run with the Vacation Vans Jeep Cherokee in two-wheel drive, got underway just ahead of Hannes Grubler in the works Nissan Hardbody in the chase for Class T honours. Passed out of the blocks, Grubler quickly closed down on the Jeep and made up his first place of the morning within a kilometre. Barker was soon to be Krobler's next victim as the former off-road and rally champion continued his early morning charge through the field. Krobler now found himself in fourth place after starting from eighth with Yaki Uber in his sights. A wrong slot by the VW Volvo driver handed third place to Krobler and Lee. Ten minutes into the race, Reinecke was maintaining his early lead in a sweet-sounding Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. The Freiburg Palmer had started the day in confident mood, but was tempering his natural instinct to push hard by taking no chances. Behind Reinecke, the Duplessis brothers were well ahead of the chasing pack and had opened a comfortable gap in their team barber's fan, Genoeth, over the rest of the special vehicle field. Krobler, still closely followed by Hubert, was next up. The four-wheel drive VW Volvo, benefiting from the lack of dust and able to follow close on the heels of the works Nissan Super Truck. Conditions were almost perfect, but how long would this last? The charge of the light brigade had nothing on this. A string of special vehicles speed across the grass, running seconds apart, with the nobles ahead of the pack in the ace cone. Hot on their heels were the Walks, the Chepex, the Bertholds, and the up-and-coming Breck, Douse, and Navigator, BZ Fonsell. National Championship off-road racing is very much a family affair. Parker had Peniel de Villiers and Francois Jordan on his tail in the second works Nissan Hardbody Super Truck. The reigning touring car champion now in the top 10 after starting in 16th place. Back on board with Hannes Krobler and Richard Leake. Now in third place with the Duplessis brothers and Reineke and Houghton in their sights. Drama at the front as Reineke overshoots a turn and loses the lead to Duplessis. Closely followed by Krobler. The Nissan Bay immediately take advantage and pass the Chenoweth to take the lead for the first time. But almost immediately, he too hesitates, and this allows Reinecke to retake the lead. With the Duplessis brothers also getting the better of the Nissan later on. An hour into the race, and among the spectators is veteran rally and off-road driver Kasi Kutsia, watching old friend and rival Arpi Reinecke come through in the lead. In hot pursuit are Duplessis, Krobler, Walk, Berthold, Chepek, and Barker, forming a seven-vehicle train. Off-road racing is never normally this close. and leading Class D is the works-assisted Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser of Shumi van Fieren and Fani Kotzer. <laughs> Bearing down on the Toyota is the Dakar Vajero of Bucks Carolyn and Henny Tostiga, who in turn have the vacation vans Jeep Cherokee of Furft and Abraham in hot pursuit. Into the abandoned diamond diggings near Bakerville, Reinecke holds a slender lead over the closing pack of Duplessis, Probler, Walk, Berthold, Parker and Chepek. How much pressure can a man take? Also making his move following an early scare caused by an overheating dip is Carolyn in the works Pajero, with the ever-present Jeep of Furcht and Abraham still breathing down his neck. Shumi van Vieren continued to hold a firm grip on Class D in his Toyota, 
but Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smallberger in the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser, who started 28th, had made up 14 places and now posed a real threat. Reigning Class D champion Hein Frobler and navigator Harald Prinsloo, who started 22nd in their Nissan, were 15th but were destined not to finish. Barberton based brothers Andrew and Chris Birkin were having a trouble free run in the Castrol Toyota Hilux and were under no threat from the rest of the competitors in Class E. Pozzulu Natal crews have invaded Class B of the special vehicle class this season. Gavin Gray and Johan van Jarsveld were clearly in charge of proceedings in their JRE. Bears and Dion Besaidnot, also from KwaZulu Natal, were running a close second. Leading the Mitsubishi Coal Challenge in the Lichtenberg 400 with Daimler Chrysler export manager Mike Tomsett and Brian Haviland. New Ford recruits Manfred Schroeder and Jack Peckham were having a steady run in their Class E diesel-powered Ford Ranger. Almost two and a half hours into the race and there's another change in the order. The Duplessis brothers are now in the lead again. They have the field breathing down the necks, and now there is no room for complacency, even less for error. The walk father and son bearing pick their way carefully through the twisting dirt tracks and have Krobler and Leek hard on their heels. Not much further back are Reinecke and Houghton, the Chepex, and Barker running without rear brakes. The Jeep of Furcht and Abraham has got past the deck of Pajera of Carolyn and Testiga and was closing on Barker's Land Rover. based Craig Harvey and Boy Stone were engineering a remarkable run through the field after starting from 33rd place and were now lying 8th. Carolyn and Weichelt were chasing hard in the Jimco's dust. Atang Makakaneni and former quad champion Evan Hutchinson were in trouble with their brand new 3.6 litre Porsche powered Jimco, smoke signalling an engine problem and early retirement from the race. The end of the first loop and new leaders in the form of the Duplessis brothers. While pit crews refueled the Chenoweth production vehicle category leaders, Reinecke and Houghton arrive and there's a flurry of activity in the Toyota pit. Rob and Gareth Walk have had a problem-free run and are well placed. Cliff got ahead now, not refueling, but um, we hope we better. We've been running a bit hot, um, running first to the road, we've clogged our radiator up all the grass seed that's out there but it's clear now so hopefully we can use all the power now. Time for the Toyota pair to get underway and continue the chase after Krobler and Leek in the Nissan who had a lightning pit stop but another place lost as the Duplessis leave the pit ahead of them with Walk in hot pursuit. Problems for Chepek Senior and Junior. The Porsche engine doesn't want to start costing them valuable time as Harvey and Stone head out onto the second loop. A driver change for the Jeep Cherokee. Arthur Abraham joins son Scott in the cockpit and the pair set off in hot pursuit of the leading pack. Problems in the N1 4x4 camp and frustration for Cliff Weichelt as he waits for the crew to repair the Toyota Land Cruiser. Something's wrong on the brake pedal. It's come loose so we haven't got brakes so we can't push out flat out. So I just want to sort that out and we're up and going otherwise the car's going well. Disappointment for Atang Makakaneni and Evan Hutchinson who were forced to retire the Jimco. But I'm glad we stopped it it's before the engine ceased and it's obviously it will save us a lot of time and money in uh, repairing it but we'll be back again next time. And Richard Leak and the Nissan Hardbody are clearly in control at the head of the chasing pack. Greg Harvey and Boystone are on a charge in the Castrol Queen Motorspares Jimco followed closely by Reinecke and Houghton in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. Cliff Barker didn't stop at the service point, which gained him a couple of places, and neither did Bucks Carolyn in the Mitsubishi Pajero, who had to contend with a hard-charging Franz Chebek Jr. The 
Duplessis brothers have dropped a few places, but were still in contention for a podium finish in the Porsche-powered Chenoweth. Oh. The Bertolds, with Gary now behind the wheel of the M and E Glass Raceco, were on a charge. They were being chased by the Jeep, which would later lose an hour when a jack failed while the Abraham pair were replacing a flat wheel. A disappointing end to an impressive performance. Shumi von Piren maintained a commanding lead in Class D in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser, now minus some body work. An hour further into the loop and Harvey and Stone had gone into the lead in the Toyota Lexus V8 powered Jimco. But where's the missing of Hannes Horbler? There's no time for complacency on the part of Harvey because the Chemics are literally breathing down their necks in the V Motors Chenoweth. Cliff Barker and Malcolm Joubert in the Land Rover were on a mission to beat all the pack who entered crews in the production vehicle category, but they couldn't afford any mistakes knowing that the experienced Afi Reinecke was in hot pursuit and waiting for his chance to grab the lead with an hour to go in the race. Word arrives that Robles Nissen has picked up a puncture as eventual Class D winners Shumi van Vieren and Vani Kotze powered their Toyota Land Cruiser along the twisty, bumpy track. Teammates Pitt Hasbrook and Christo Bosch started 55th and had moved up to 11th at this point. This fine performance earned them second place in Class D. Andrew and Chris Burton in the Toyota Hilux were never under threat in Class E and the win got their championship season off to a good start. Hill Nell's winning streak in Class B was well and truly broken by Gavin Gray and Johan van Hausfeld in the JRE. Mike Tomset and Brian Haviland were the leading Mitsubishi Colt crew until right before the end when Freddy van Alunda and Philip Kutsia in the Petrican Colt sneaked through into third place in Class D. Disappointment for reigning Class B champion, Hill Nell. Hill, what's the problem? Oh, flat wheel. <laughs> Nell loses a place to Max Moore in the Class B Industrial Hardware Mighty Mag, who finishes third in class. Victory at the end of a long and tough GC Probler Liftenberg 400 for the formidable Chevek father and son duo and the V Motors Chenoweth. Drama as Greg Harvey and Boy Stone come limping in with their rear tyre in shreds. This puncture costing them almost certain victory. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> We're stolen a winner game from it. Yeah, this is a good, a good start to get A1 back. We've been missing it. Uh, last year we had a bit of a bad run, but uh, it's a good start for A1 and uh, we've got four points. Uh, it's a good, good start for the season. We're really happy with that. Results for the special vehicle category have the Jeff taking top honours with Harvey, Duplessis, Berthold and Walk rounding out the top five. Cliff Barker and Malcolm Joubert achieved their objective of beating the factory teams in their privately entered Land Rover, and Arby Reinecke and Robin Houghton in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser are left to lick their wounds as they cross the line second. We had a good run. I think the format with everybody starting so close made good racing. We were all close all day. Um, luckily, there was no, not much dust. Drama at the finish when Hannes Krobler and Richard Leake arrive in a very battered Nissan hardbody. Just about say, six kilos from the end, there was uh, like a ditch, um, but it wasn't that bad this morning. And in the dust, we just went into the ruts uh, with the other cars, and we went like the car went in over and over. So that was it. The team of Cliff Barker and Malcolm Joubert placed their privateer Land Rover at the top of the production vehicle log, with Reinecke, Carolyn and Krobler having to wait till the next round to challenge the leaders. <laughs>